video. Today, uh, I've got this lovely, I just want to hug her, she's so cute. Um, she has got so much experience in the radio world. Actually, why don't you tell everyone uh, a bit about yourself? Yes, well, um, I'm a trained journalist. I've worked for TV and print, but my real love is radio. So um, I've worked on full commercial, mainly, and uh, community radios. I set up a radio station called Bang Radio, which won an award for best local radio station. I'm very <laughs> proud of that. <laughs> um, and then worked on other community radio stations and mainly commercial. I, uh, um, I had a very short experience at the BBC. So we are with a woman today with a wealth of radio experience. And now uh, the reason you probably clicked on this video is maybe you're a radio presenter already and you've been doing a lot of unpaid work, maybe at your university radio, maybe doing community radio. And you're just maybe getting a bit frustrated and you're just like, well, how do I progress to making that pesetas, to making that money? But we do want to talk first about some realistic advice that Gabriella has got for you. Um, go, go, get straight into it, because I think this is so important what Gabriella's about to say. So, first of all, I guess my, my experience is mainly in production. So, I'll give you some advice based on, you know, working on production and then presenting. I'll get there, don't worry. Um, the first thing is, I want you to question your motivation. Why do you want to get into radio? Um, is it because it's cool? Is it because you like music? Is it because you'd like to go to festivals for free? Or is it because you'd like to be famous and radio seems to be easier than getting into TV? Well, if those are your motivation, I'm going to say give up now. Because radio is about passion, it's about hard work, and you'll never make the big bucks unless you're Nick Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one, and uh, and there's no way he's going to, you know. <laughs> he ain't going anywhere. So. Nope, nope. And thank God, because he's an amazing presenter. Nick, you're great. <laughs> anyway. Um, I love this plug, <laughs> LBC right here. Well, what can I say? That's where I work. <laughs> so anyway, um, on a serious note, so question your motivation. If you are someone who really breathes in radio every second of the day, if you know every single station on the, on the UK dial, and perhaps abroad, you've listened to radio abroad, that would be great as well. And you could literally name every single presenter on the schedule of most mainstream radio stations, then perhaps there's something in it for you. If you're a presenter, you've done, you know, you've done your work experience. Um, and when I mean by work experience, is it's not just presenting at a local radio station. Be a part of that local radio station, whether it's a community, a local BBC, a local commercial, whatever it is. Be a, an, a, a fundamental part. So, in other words, presenters come and go, and quite frankly, they're so re replaceable, it's actually scary if you're a presenter, because you could be let go tomorrow. In fact, I have witnessed several presenters that have been let go 12 minutes before going on air and their show was pulled because they were too distressed to carry on. And this is commercial radio and they were paid quite a lot of money. I so think that, it sounds really harsh what Gabrielle is saying, but like she, yeah. she's giving you proper examples that this is reality. Yeah. Unfortunately. I want to be real with you because there's no point in going in all, you know, sort of dreamy like. <laughs> Um, it's about being realistic and that's why I say question your motives and be very uh, indispensable. So if you've become indispensable, so you're not just, um, forget your ego. If you're a presenter, even if you're the breakfast presenter, even if you're the flagship presenter, go up there and help out. Help out on the website, brush up your social media skills, um, learn how to you know, update a blog, how to produce, how to, you know, perhaps you're a presenter but you might want to produce another show, help out, become a broadcast assistant, understand there's so much more than the voice you hear on the radio. And there's, there's so many people around and those are the indispensable people. So if you've got skills in production, it's harder to be let go because, you know, you are needed. And remember that you can be disposed at any point. Um, secondly, it's, it's the truth and in the economy <laughs> that we live in, no job is safe. There's no such thing as a job for life and presenting is certainly not one of them. Um, but like I said, if you're off and on air helping out, then that really helps because then, you know, the radio staff understands that you understand the work they do. So you've done your work experience, you're ready for the next step and you think you're ready to be paid. You deserve to be paid by this stage, you've done a lot of work experience, you've put in a lot of work and uh, 
as, as I said earlier, it's very difficult to find jobs as presenters themselves. But you might be able to get in through the back door by doing some production. So graveyard shifts is probably a good place to start. Places like LBC, who are stations that are on 24 hours live, um, always need people who are ready to work at night. So be prepared to work behind the scenes is my first tip. Um, if you can do production, you are ways steps ahead. Secondly, build your profile. These days, it's all about having thousands of followers on, on Twitter, Facebook, all the different networks. Make YouTube videos, make your own, be creative. Watch what's out there and listen to what's out there because you don't want to be mimicking what's out there already. Just be you. And finally, um, get another job outside radio. Maybe a little part-time job will help you make contacts in, believe me, always keep contacts. You never know where you might end up being. You might be one day, I'll give you an example of a uh, production staff at LBC who, uh, very, very young, he's uh, still at university, very bright man. Um, he knows everything, and I mean everything, about athletics. Very busy day in the newsroom, um, sorry, not athletic, cycling. Um, very busy day, uh, the Tour de France was crossing uh, London, and something happened to the reporter that was supposed to go. Who did they send? They sent him. Him. Yes. <laughs> so not only he was behind the scenes writing and, and scripting and stuff, he actually got a chance to go on mic. And quite frankly, he's been reporting for now, what, a year? And he's wow. doing really well. I think these tips, I don't want these to go over your head because what Gabriella is saying is the truth and it's real and you might watch this video and think, oh, I just want to know how to get paid. But as Gabriella said, she has been working in radio for like years and years and years. So she knows what she's talking about. She's seen real life examples. And I think the main thing is you, now, especially now, you have to be kind of multifaceted, don't you? Absolutely. Like you can't just, even when I started like 12 years ago, whenever it was, then you could maybe just about scrape in as just being a presenter. But in a way, I wish then I knew what I know now, that you have mm. to be, you can't just be a presenter anymore. No. Like you have to no. do, like Gabriella says, you have to do so many other things, like make your own blogs, do your own videos, do, produce your own, why don't you do your own podcast? There's so yes, much absolutely. that you can do. Um, I think that's kind of the main takeaway point and just realise that you're never going to make millions. Well, you, well, you might, but... <laughs> One in a million shots. <laughs> I think. I think. Yes, it's about knowing lots of skills, and it's about uh, knowing what makes you unique, and also knowing that you might think you're unique, but there's a hundred thousands out there who think the same as you. What is it different about you? <laughs> I feel like crying because <laughs> this is such great advice. Um, please, if you don't take on all this advice today, at least just do. It's all about progress, isn't it? So just take it step by step, who you want to be, write it down, and one day you'll be set right here. <laughs> just be prepared to work hard, and I don't want to scare anyone, but the truth is radio is hard work. It's wonderful. I'm obsessed by radio. I was, uh, you know, I was raised by a blind grandmother, so we only listen to the radio, never watch TV. So, um, and that obsession really helped me and kept me going through the hardest moment. So when I ended up working 14, 16 hour shifts on less than 40 pound a day, and I'm not talking a very long time ago, or things like that, it was that passion that kept me going. If you don't have it, you just won't make it into radio. That's a great way. If you don't have it, you won't make it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're this welcome. Been such a, I think this is one of my favourite videos. <laughs> this is just real talk. She says that all the time. Cut, yes, <laughs> no, I just love this. It's real talk. And um, please put it into action. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And for my bonus advice, click here. That was so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> If you really want to be a radio presenter, I want you to do that, but I just want to tell you the truth as well and my experiences. Like, I'm no expert in making a demo or making a show reel or, this, or doing a radio link. I just want to give you realistic advice on how I started in the radio and how you can too.